Hey sweet friends, this is Gina. Welcome to the Rebookery channel. Oh my goodness, it has been so long since I have done a video. I feel I feel awful um, that I haven't done anything for a while, but life just kind of got crazy and my school babies needed me and this has just been the longest winter ever. Um, so I'm on spring break. And I have lots of plans um, to get back with you guys, do some videos, um, show you some new journaling spreads that I've been thinking about, and um, definitely getting some stuff in my shop and just hoping to get some, some inspiration out there. I have a bunch of stuff on my desk because I couldn't decide what I wanted this video to be about. I wanted to talk to you guys about my junk planner and some new junk planner ideas that I have. I wanted to talk to you guys about um, my poetry journal that I've been working on because this has literally been the only source of creativity that I've had. And I wanted to also show you some things I've been working on um, for the the shop. This is the junk planner I've been working on. You can see that my my spine is starting to come apart, which is no big deal here. It's it's the spine is still intact. It's just this piece of artwork that I put over top of it, and I just need to um, tape this and glue it down. But it's a good thing because I am actually done with this book. Um, I had originally set out to go until I think May, but I ended up and used some of the month spreads and just did some artwork. Um, so my last month that I had in here was March, and here we are, it is March. Oh, it's St. Patrick's Day. Oh, hello, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, so it's March 17th. So this, this is it. Um, once I'm done with this, this whole entire planner will be full. So I'll just do a quick little flip through here just to remind you, make sure we're in frame just remind you of what we did with this and I think did I start in god I can't even remember which which this one is is it June or July anyway here's where we started and then this was oh this was my August so it must have been July that we started in and you know we talked a lot about how this would just be sitting by the couch and this would be my way of coming home and just kind of being creative when I just didn't really have a lot of energy. So I've had so much fun with this junk planner. This is this is one of my favorites. I know I say that all the time, but this, this truly is one of my favorites. I love this one. And I did every single page in here and then even added stuff and yeah. I even did like some school stuff like planning out and the, gosh, I did this back in August and September and like planning out how I wanted to do some things differently in my classroom. And so here I am at March and I've already documented a few things. Um, I've got a few more things I want to document on here, but really yesterday I just played around with, I had a really limited number of supplies. Um, I had like a watercolor palette and then I had just a few pins and a, one scrap of fabric, um, a sticker, and then some glue. And I sat out there on the deck all day long yesterday and just played around with this. And it was so fun because I just, I liked having a limited supply of materials because I didn't get overwhelmed and I didn't think about anything. I literally just picked something up and just slopped it down. So... Once my March is over, um, then I will be done with this journal and it will be time to retire it. But this one has been a lot of fun. So I don't want to be plannerless. And with this being the middle of March, I've been thinking about what I want my next planner to be. So I've got a couple of things that I've been working on here. Um, again, I'm going to go with the junk planner theme. So I started with this book right here. So I have a ton of vintage cookbooks that I felt like I needed um, to buy a whole bunch of at a sale. Oh my gosh, two years ago, I think two years ago. And this lady had a huge collection of vintage cookbooks and I just went crazy. And yeah, so I wanted to use some of these because they're just kind of sitting around. So I thought this one would be kind of a cool one because I loved the color of it. And um, I, I really liked this binding right here. I'm not typically a person that likes this type, type of binding, but 
with this book, this book was made so well that this is actually glued in. So this is super, super strong. And I want that whatever I use as my planner, I want it to be super strong. So I, I got the idea of taking this one and then I took out probably, oh my gosh, a half to two thirds of the pages. Now these pages were very thick, they're matte, but I also glued them together. So it made them extra thick. And then I couldn't stop there. I went ahead and added tape, all kinds of different washi tape to the edges. So once I did this, I was like, cool, this is gonna be uh, my planner. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a second. Maybe I don't really want this to be my planner. So I went to another book. I've been saving this book for a long time. It's called Glorious Stew. And, oh, let's turn it around the right way. And part of the reason why I've been saving it is because it is just the most gorgeous illustrations and the font. And I just love, I don't know, I just love it. And I love the size. So this has been sitting around and I haven't done anything with it. So what I did was I went in and I removed probably half to two thirds of the pages. And I thought this is going to be my planner. And you can see where I have removed all of these pages because I wanted to have a lot of space, right? Because look at this one. You see how this, so I wanted to have a lot of space. So as I did this, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to be my new planner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. And I started to glue pages together because I wanted to make them thicker. And I think I got about halfway done. I think these in the middle I haven't glued together. I didn't finish. And then I was like, you know, I don't really think I want this to be my planner. <laughs> so then I went to this one and oh my gosh, the cover on this book. This is one of those um, ones that I know I got from that lady um, from that sale. And so this is just the sweetest book. Oh my gosh, it's, I love the size, I love the color, I love the papers, they are really cottony. Um, and they've got these cool little illustrations in them every once in a while, and I just, uh, I don't know. I love it, love it, love it. So I removed pages, about a half to two thirds, and I thought, okay, this is gonna be my planner. And then I can't figure out which one I want to be my planner. So I have no idea what I'm going to do here. But what I think is I need to decide, and I'm going to decide here in the next um, few days, which one I want to be my planner. Now, I did not glue these pages together because they are pretty thick. Um, you could glue them together. I don't know. I just don't, I haven't decided. I don't know which one I want. Um, so anyway, so I'm going to decide between these three, I'm going to decide which one I want to be my next junk planner. And then what I'm going to do is the two that I don't pick, I'm going to put those in my Etsy shop. And if somebody wants, if somebody's looking for a, um, an altered book that they want to use, uh, for any type of journal, but they could definitely use it for a junk planner, man, I would love to get my shop back open on Tuesday, Tuesday, March 19th. Ooh, I could do that. I could do that. So let's plan on, let's plan on me opening my shop and I don't know exactly what time I'm going to open it. I have a feeling it's going to be more like in the afternoon, but I'm going to reopen my shop on Tuesday, March 19th. And, um, you'll be able to see which one I chose as my planner. Cause it'll be the one that's not listed in my Etsy shop. So that's kind of my junk planner scene. I got to figure out what I'm doing with that poetry journal. I'm obsessed. So if you Remember a couple of videos back, I grabbed this binder because I loved the size. I took some file folders that, because I have 20 million thousand of them at school that are just ones I've had forever that, you know, as I go digital, I just don't use them very much and I got tired of throwing them in the recycling bin. So I just actually cut down these file folders and punched holes in them. No big deal, they're all different sizes. And what I've been doing is, this this kind of this kind of journaling works when you have literally nothing in your brain and and this is how my brain has been the past probably three or four weeks i've just been it's been mush it's just been so um full of life and and everything that goes along with it that my creativity has not been able to to surface and i've i've not been able to do 
my art. I've not been able to do um, record keeping and, and documenting of memories and things like that because I just, I, I, there's, there's not enough space in my head. I wish there was, but there's not. So this has been sitting by my couch. I will grab a couple of markers, colored pencils, whatever is sitting there, crayons, and I will just start doodling. Like this was, um, I was trying to get a marker to work and so I was you know, putting lines on here to make it work. And then I just started circles. And um, here was another one where I just started drawing clouds. And then um, this was a quote that my husband had sent me. Dreams are free, hustle sold separately. Freaking love that quote. That is like, that's my mantra. I love it. Um, just, I mean, like this. I, I just sat here and I, I did hearts. <laughs> because you know my skills are so limited when drawing. So I just did hearts and I was practicing some stamps that uh, my friend Brian made me. And then I just started putting some produce stickers on here and then just taking some washes of paint and just slapping them on here and just not even, this This just has no rhyme nor reason. It's just me getting a little bit of color, a little bit of design, a little bit of creativity out every day. And, and it's, it's kept me sane. Um, and I'm, I love it. And it hasn't been anything that has taken a lot of time. It's just, it's right there and I just do it. And I don't even care what the final product is going to be. So here's, here's these pages that I have. And so now I can, I can go in and I can do something with them. The hardest part of journaling for me is is, is finding words. I think that is the hardest part because I am not a writer. I'm not a wordsmith and just words are really hard for me. I always go back and read what I've written and I feel like it sounds really dorky. But one of the ways that I can still be creative, I can still work in a journal, but I get, get rid of that fear of words is I use somebody else's words. And I have told you guys before, I love poetry and I'm not very sophisticated. I love, um, children's poetry. I have a lot of poetry books, ones that I had from when I was teaching and then um, just ones that I would have like in my classroom library when I was teaching elementary school. And then I've kind of gotten rid of a bunch of them over the years and I've just kept my favorite ones. So I'll just pull out um, a book like this one right here. And I just read through the poems. This is weird because I am not a reader. Like I don't sit down and just read books. I just... I don't know, it just, it, I, it does not appeal to me. But I can sit down and read poetry, which is very odd. I think because it's short and I'm not invested in a long drawn out um, narrative. It's short, it's light, especially if I do children's poetry. And I can always seem to somehow relate this to me, to my own life, to a memory. I had a poetry notebook before and I'll, I'll link it below and I've showed you guys, I've done a video of my first poetry notebook and I loved it, loved it, loved it. And then I love to use poetry like in my journals. But this one is like the poetry journal where it's just poems that I love. And so ultimately I'm thinking like, you know, years down the road here, I will just have a collection of my most favorite poems and I've got some sort of creativity or artwork that has gone along with it. So that's kind of where this is, this is coming from. And these are like all of my resources that I've had, where I've been pulling my poems from. And what I have found is that over the years, uh, some of these books, I've pulled out all the poems that I need. I like, like, I don't, I don't need any more poems from here because I've gotten them all out. I've pulled the, and when I say I've gotten them all out, I don't mean I've ripped the pages. I mean, I've like copied down the ones that I want and they're ready to go to someone else. So I had a pile and I was going to send them um, to Goodwill. And then I thought about, I guess I'll just go ahead and put some on my Etsy shop because maybe this is something you might be interested in. And the reason why I love it is because you don't have to worry about coming up with the words and it's just you being creative, coloring with a crayon or playing around with watercolors and then you put a poem next to it and boom, you, you've made something. It could mean something to you. It Maybe it doesn't mean anything to you, but it's just a way to get that creativity out. So I'm going to be putting some of these in my Etsy shop. This was a poem about um, soda and it was, again, these are all children's poems. And so I just wanted to write this poem and it was all about the different flavors of the sodas. And so then I did them in different colors 
And you know, this probably took two hours, but it was two hours of just me sitting there. I was in the zone. I didn't have to think about anything. And once I got the whole thing done, I was like, you know what? I think I have some vintage soda labels. So I went and got a couple of those, put them on here, put a little piece of fabric. And then I was thinking Alice in Wonderland. So I pulled this little tag. It's just literally just a piece of scrap paper that was sitting around, cut it into the shape of a tag. And then I poked some holes and put a little bit of twine through there, put a scratch and sniff sticker right there, and then wrote the title and the author, because I always like to pay homage to the author, because these are not my words. I don't ever want to claim them as my words. This this just makes me happy. It's just a, a happy, happy little page. This is another one where I sat down with markers, Sharpie markers. And let me tell you something, guys. There is no better feeling than taking file folders and putting Sharpie marker on it. I don't know what it is about the two textures. It's the tooth of the paper and it's the the sturdiness of the, the Sharpie, the ink. There's something about how that, that ink drags across the paper. And I know this is, I'm getting so existential here, but it just is so soothing. And so I just did this little series of where I was taking um, Sharpie markers and just doing all kinds of doodles and stuff on file folders. This was one of those ones where I just started drawing these flowers with Sharpie markers. And then I got out my watercolors and I just started putting bits of watercolor down. And I am not a watercolorist by any means. I got out some smaller pens and did a little detail. And what came out was this flower, the, these flowers. So I went through my book of poetry and I found a flower poem by Dorothy Altus, stuck it on here, and then I just went over it. I don't know if you can tell, I just went over it with like some shimmery um, decoupage type stuff. And so it kind of blended it all together. Love it, and that just makes me so happy. My absolute favorite poem is, Is the Moon Tired? And when I taught elementary school, I had this up on a chart, and this is how I would teach kids to read. I would put poems on charts, and then we would learn the poems. We would learn how to read the poems. We would learn how to interpret the poems, so that would give us our meaning. And then they would learn the sight words from the poems. And this was one of this was one of my class. This was always our favorite one. So I have this poem written in several of my journals. But I found another moon poem by Christina Rossetti called Lady Moon. And I loved it when I read it and it just, oh, it spoke to me. It's actually in one of these books, Lady Moon. So when I read this, like all of these poems just spoke to me because, oh my gosh, stars and moons in space. So I was like, all right, I need to put this poem in my book. And I loved the illustration that went with it. So I wanted to recreate something like that. So I have some uh, old blue file folders. I thought that would be a perfect background. This is wallpaper. And so I just cut out my moon shapes to kind of look like this. And then I actually um, typed this poem up and then just printed it off. And then I realized that my illustration or my little picture wasn't gonna work. So I had to make a flap. So I just glued this on, you can see that. And then it goes across here. So then I had this space right here and I was like, well, if I'm gonna put a Christina Rossetti poem about moons, I have to put, is the moon tired? So again, I just took another piece from that wallpaper. This is wrapping paper from one of my students, I think three Christmases ago. And I just keep this at school because I just love this wrapping paper so much. And uh, every once in a while, I'll just tear a little piece off of it and I'll, um, I'll stick it in some sort of a journal spread. And then again, I just printed off her poem and yeah. So it's good. And then the cool thing is I have the back with this cool flap on it so I can put um, another poem on the back. So I am having a lot of fun with my poetry journal and it has definitely served its purpose because it's been able to let me get some creativity out and not have to think about, you know, words and pictures and matching things up and documenting things. And it's funny, as I read through these poems, I find ones that speak to me and it's almost as if I am um, memory keeping because 
it just, I can relate these poems to, a lot of these poems I can relate to, to my life. I can relate to a memory from my childhood, or I can relate to a memory from my kid's childhood. And so it is a form of scrapbooking and memory keeping. It's just um, a different method of doing it. Going along with having trouble coming up with my own words, um, I have a collection. I'm addicted to these 1970s, 1980s readers. And if you uh, live here in the United States, you went to public schools, you know what I'm talking about. This is this is how we learned to read. It was the blue birds and the red birds and the yellow birds and you had reading groups and oh yeah. So every time I see these, I love, I love to snatch them up. And I've, I've amassed quite a collection of them over the years and I just never could figure out what I wanted to do with them because some of them are just the illustrations and the stories are just they're they're precious they are just because it is that time period and that was me growing up so I finally got the idea of you know what let's take these pages out and let's turn them into journal ephemera because what another you know another thing of not being able to find your own words is if i had something that already had words on it i would absolutely use it to convey my message so maybe poetry isn't your thing but maybe something like this is so you've seen me use book pages before i love using book pages in my journaling i love using the text and stuff from them i love using um, sometimes the illustrations from them and so that's kind of my thinking and that's where i went with this so i took these readers and they're all from from 1970s I think this one might be 1960s but they're all 1970s and they go up through I think this one is 1984 so it's in that time period and I took them apart and created paper packs so in the paper pack I just took several of my favorite pages. So I didn't just take all the pages, I took ones that I loved, like they had really cool illustrations, and then I mixed them from all the books. So in a package, you would get papers from all of those books. And then I tried to include two poems at the very beginning, because in those readers, there was always a little um, section where before and after, a story they would have some children's poetry and so I put two um, poetry pages in each one and then I also put in like the glossary because they they just had some cool glossaries Look, Langston Hughes poem I used this poem in my poetry journal um, about my cat that just passed away and and it just it worked perfectly and it it may not have anything to do with cats it probably has to do with a real person because it's about um, a friend leaving, but I, I was able to tie it to my cat because first of all, my cat's name was Friendly and he was our friend and he left. And so this, this poem, oh my gosh, it made its way in my poetry journal, but I also found a couple of copies of it and was able to put it in, the, um, in these packs. These will be in my shop. And I, like I said, I'm gonna to try to get everything in by Tuesday. And these, I will list these as the um, 1970s readers, vintage readers. And there is just so much inspiration in here. Even if you didn't cut the pages apart, just the colors and the, the pictures. I mean, look at that. Ah, that just, to me, that inspires me. Just those colors right there, because that is totally 1970s right there. Late 1970s, early 1980s. Maybe. 1970s, 1980s wasn't your jam. It, it is my jam. That is my, you guys know, that is, that's my time period. I love that. But I do also love the sweet illustrations and stuff of the 1950s, 1940s, 1960s. And so I have a lot of readers from that time period. And like this one, this one says 1971. But I know the book is, I mean, maybe that's when this kid had this, but I know this is a book before 1971. Um, this one is, oh gosh, let's look. 69, okay. And, I don't know, that one doesn't say. Anyway, so I've got the, oh, 62, 61, 62. These are what people would call Dick and Jane books. Some of these do have Dick and Jane stories. Some of these do have stories about Tommy and Susie and Nancy and Bobby, but it's all that same, it's all that same 
era where it's the um, <laughs> it's the white picket fence era. The illustrations make you think of a simpler time, and they there's they're just so exquisite, like just so cute and nostalgic. So once again, could totally be used in journaling. And so what I did was I took my readers and I took them apart and I pulled, like you can see, they, a lot of them have damage and stuff on them. And I pulled ones that have illustrations. So my plan is to put these into packs and I'll call these my vintage 1950s readers. And I'm gonna put these in my Etsy shop also. And again, I'm gonna do a mix of all the books. So every pack will have a mix from all of these titles. I think I have a couple more books that I was gonna pull from too. Here's my little journal. You can see it's not very little anymore. I do have some empty pages in here and I do want to fill up those empty pages, but it is time for me to start thinking about making a new journal. I, uh, I don't know. It may be this summer before I actually commit to making one. Seems like I was having such a hard time with my um, book that I wanted to use with my planner. But um, yeah, so I'm getting to the end of this. And here's where I am on filling it up. I sat down to do some journaling in it the other day and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, there was no inspiration. Um, so I realized it's because I have not printed off photos in a really long time. I am going to take all the photos that I have taken and not printed off since, oh my gosh, it's probably been September. So September of 2018 is the last time I printed photos. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sit down and I'm gonna print off photos and get me a nice little stack of inspiration and then fill up the last of these pages with photos um, from this last year because this is about the time period of this. Now, here's a funny story. Okay, I am a complete moron. Um, I never try to deny that. This, this, is, this is the printer I use. I got this printer, oh my gosh, when we first moved up here, so it would have been 2007. I've had this printer forever and I love this printer. And when I originally got it, I don't think I spent that much on it. I think I wanna say it was like $60, $70. So this printer has done everything for me. It's a PictureMate Epson Dash. Used to be able to buy the print packs um, at Best Buy and they would be $39.99 and it would come with paper and it would come with the ink cartridge. But now since they don't make this anymore, the paper and ink cartridges are really hard to find. So I found some at a discount store and I've just kind of been collecting them. So let me show you what one of those looks like. Okay, so this is a printer pack that comes with it. And you can see this one has seen better days. So there's a closeout discount store that actually was selling these. So every time I would go, I would find um, if they had them. $19.99, I'm totally okay with that because they were originally $40. I have actually gotten them for like $7 before because they were running a sale. So I probably have five or six of these packs and you know, that'll last me quite a bit. And I have seen they do have some on eBay, but they are very expensive. So anyway, all right, so long story short, this is my printer, this is what I use, and I pretty much just take my pictures off of my phone or if it's on my big camera, I'll put it onto a thumb drive, you know, like one of these, and then you just stick it in the back and it'll, up, it'll upload all the photos and you can do just a little bit of editing in here and then it just prints them off. And it prints them off on four by six pages, but it gives you all kinds of different sizes. So some of you guys have asked me about how I get my small um, photos and it's because in here, the program in here can let you print teeny tiny photos on a paper or you can resize them. You can get two on a piece of paper, you can get four on a piece of paper, you can get six on a piece of paper. So anyway, love, love, love this. And um, yeah, this is my go-to. So in September of last year, I sat down to print off a bunch of pictures and they wouldn't print. And I was like, oh no, my printer has finally died on me. And, then, and this made me so sad and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get them to print. And I was just, I was devastated because um, yeah, that was that was my favorite printer ever of all times. So I started looking at eBay. So I found one on eBay and it was for a pretty good price. 
I think it was like $80 and it was supposed to be new and in the box. So I bought it and it comes to my house and I'm so excited and I open it up. It was disgusting. It smelled like dead fish and cigarette smoke and it was just, it, it was awful. Yeah, it was new in package, but it had been sitting in a swampy basement for probably 10 years. It was awful. Um, so then I thought, okay, well I could get over the smell cause I can, I can clean it up. So I put the cartridge in cause you have to charge up the cartridge and everything, put the cartridge in, um, got it all ready to go and it would not work. It was absolutely awful. So I emailed the eBay seller and I told him I was not happy with this and that I wanted a full refund. And sure enough, he refunded me all the money and even paid for it to be shipped back to him. So then I was back with this printer and it was broken and I still couldn't figure out how I could get things to print. So I got back on eBay. I found another one. This time I was a little more choosy. I found um, a brand new one in the box and never been opened, blah, 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 blah. And I wanna say it was like $160 maybe, which totally blows my mind because I know this printer was not that much for when I, it first came out. But I went ahead and purchased it. It was my Christmas present to myself. And um, yeah, it comes in the mail and I opened it up. So here you go, right here. Comes in the mail, I open it up. And I'm like, all right, woohoo! And I set it up and I go to print and it won't print my pictures. And I'm like, what the heck is wrong with me? Why is this not printing my pictures? So <laughs> I played around with it. I was so mad I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then I finally figured out I had my pictures in the wrong format. If you print off these printers, you have to have them in a JPEG format. And I had them in something else. I don't know what I had them in. And so once I put them back into JPEGs, and then <laughs> put them on my old printer. They printed off perfectly. And then I put them on the new printer and they perfect printed off perfectly. So now I have two printers. So I thought about selling one, but I'm not going to because I couldn't decide which one to sell. If I sell the new one, then I absolutely guarantee you my old one will, will actually break. And so then I'm without a printer again. If I sold the old one and kept the new one, I would feel awful if I sold it to someone and they used it a couple of times and then it finally did break because I have been using it since 2006, 2007. So now I have two printers. So my goal today is I think what I'm gonna do, set up both of these printers because I have both of them, and I think I'm just going to work on printing off a bunch of photos. Once I print off those photos, then I will have some inspiration and I think what I'll do is I'll go back into my um, little journal and maybe do some memory keeping. I don't know, we'll see how it goes. I'll, let, I'll keep you guys posted. So anyway, I feel like this video has gone on and on and on forever and I've just rambled, haven't done a lot of artwork, just, just a lot of talking. So thank you guys for sticking through this video with me and thanks for listening to all my ramblings. I I hope you guys are healthy. I hope you guys are happy. And I hope you are going to do something creative today. I will have my shop open on Tuesday, March 19th. And um, hopefully get some journal with me videos going. And maybe get some actual journals made to put in my shop too. Have a great rest of the day guys. Bye.